Hi, everybody. Um, as I mentioned in class this morning, and probably we'll, we'll mention this afternoon, we didn't quite get through um, our discussion of Venetian Renaissance art. And so rather than um, leave you all with a lot of questions, I wanted to at least upload something, you know, a, a few minutes uh, of, of, a, of a narrated PowerPoint, um, just touching on some of the points that maybe we didn't get to in class. Um, so some of this might be a repeat from things you've heard in class. Some of it will undoubtedly um, be, be new material, and hopefully it helps with this week's quiz and, and possibly um, with the exam if, if you may need that as well. So I would encourage you to, um, to take advantage of, of this uh, uh, before you take the quiz uh, this weekend. So um, as mentioned before, um, and I think I mentioned this maybe last week when we first started talking about the Renaissance, uh, the way that the Renaissance unfolded in Venice was uh, a little bit different than uh, how it unfolded in Florence. And a lot of that had to do with the, the place of individual personality. Whereas in Florence, you had um, a lot of individual um, people seeking to make a name for themselves. Uh, maybe most famously Brunelleschi, uh, famously temperamental um, Brunelleschi, uh, but then also figures like Donatello, Michelangelo, um, just a kind of an explosion at Raphael, Raphael to even, well, not Raphael, um, but uh, he, was, he was more centered in Rome, but um, just an explosion of these individual talents. Um, in Venice, things unfolded in, in a little slower of a way or a little more deliberate of a way. And part of that has to do with just the nature of Venice. It was a little more of a stable place, a little more of a politically stable place, more of a conservative place. And that's reflected in the art. Um, a lot of the art in Venice really unfolded in the context of workshops um, and in some cases families. Um, as opposed to individuals. So one of the, the, the first families of Vene Venetian art um, were the Bellinis. Um, and we're focusing on um, one of the, the sons, one of the second generation of, of these artists, uh, Giovanni Bellini. Um, so just a few things. We're going to look at a couple of his works and, and think about you know, what makes them Renaissance. So this is the, the San Job altarpiece, uh, the altarpiece of St. Job. Um, again, an altarpiece is a, is a, a work that would be situated um, up behind the altar of a church, so something that people would look at as they worship, so obviously has a devotional theme. Um, this one includes a number of uh, figures, both from scripture and from the history of the church. There's um, St. Job here, uh, the, the, the famous, uh, famously patient sufferer from the Old Testament, um, and then, uh, of course, you have the Virgin and Child, uh, Madonna, uh, Mary and, and, and Jesus. Um, you also have some other figures. You have um, St. Saint, uh, Francis with his stigmata here, the, the wounds. You have St. Sebastian um, and St. Dominic, um, as well as some other figures, uh, for, again, both from, from scripture and church history. Um, a couple of Renaissance elements to this piece. Um, you have depth right, created by, by linear perspective. We can, we can think about the works of uh, Piero della Francesca here and the way that he used vanishing points, um, that, that early Renaissance artist used vanishing points and lines to create a sense of depth. Here, uh, Bellini does this um, so that we can get the sense of this half dome and the receding wall and our eyes are, are directed to, to the vanishing point here at the back of this painting, uh, which creates depth, allows these these figures to occupy space uh, in a realistic way, a deep way. Um, you have things like the uh, the pilasters or the the pseudo columns uh, that have a um, a callback to, um, to 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 classical times, um, and that's balanced here with with some some Byzantine features, uh, which were still really out, really evident in uh, the the art of of Venice. Uh, this gold half dome would not be out of place in a in a Byzantine work. Um, but those are just a few, again, again, also the, the naturalism, the realism here um, points to um, some of the, the, the Renaissance qualities of this work. Um, another work by Giovanni Bellini is St. Francis in Ecstasy. Um, uh, here, you know, obviously a, a, a sacred theme of, uh, depicting St. Francis um, in the wilderness. And this allows Bellini to do a few things. It allows him to pay um, enormous attention to, to detail, the detail, not just of, of, of Francis's, you know, human form and, and the, the cloak he's wearing and, um, and things like that, but also some other details, particularly to do with the landscape, um, this kind of craggy, 
uh, rocky outpost um, where we, we picture Francis. This is something that uh, was indicative of the Renaissance, particularly uh, the Northern Renaissance. Uh, some work we'll be looking at in the next couple of weeks uh, that took place in the Netherlands um, and places up North. Um, they, the, the way that they painted landscapes with this attention to detail um, seems to, to be entering into conversation with what's going on in Venice. Uh, you also have atmospheric perspective. Note, note back uh, in, the, in the, the, the back of the painting um, as the, the landscape recedes uh, into the distance, it gets hazier, it gets blurrier. That detail that we see with the, uh, the up close uh, rocky landscape is, is gone as we look at, the, uh, as, as, at the, the portions of the landscape that are farther away. So these are just a few things going on in Bellini's work that really point to it as a, um, a work of the Renaissance. We wanna look primarily at two artists though um, today uh, that, that did their work in Venice, Giorgione and um, the, the younger um, Titian. Um, Giorgione seems to have had a lot of influence uh, on, on Titian. Um, they worked together um, in, in, in some capacity as mentor and protege. Um, and we want to look at the qualities that their work share um, in particular, um, and also what they share with the, the works of the Renaissance. So this work by Giorgione, The Tempest, is, is a fascinating one for a lot of reasons. Um, we see some Renaissance qualities, you know, realism, naturalism, um, the uh, classical ruins, uh, both in the bridge and, and these pillars up front, uh, this wall here that seems to be broken. All of these seem to point to a, a classical past that, of course, is indicative of the Renaissance. Um, detail when it comes to landscape, atmospheric perspective, um, again, on full display here as we, as we think about um, how Giorgione creates depth uh, with uh, both through linear perspective, but also particularly through atmospheric perspective here. Um, shading, the chiaroscuro, that, that shading of light and dark, uh, that's indicative of the Renaissance. We see that here. Um, but one of the qualities that we see in the work of Giorgione and, and we'll see in Titian um, is the drama and the tension that is created um, really through the use of the eyes, what we might call the gaze, G-A-Z-E. Um, one of the things we see Giorgione doing and, and Titian doing is, is really um, developing and using the concept of, of how people look at one another, how people make eye contact, um, how people look upon one another to create a lot of tension in this work. So here in this piece, for example, we have two figures um, and they are separated in some way. They're separated by a stream. They're separated in a more dramatic way by this, this lightning crack, this coming storm um, that we see in the background. But even as they're separated, they're also connected. One of the ways they're connected is, is this bridge that spans the, uh, the, the waterway between them. Um, but also they're connected um, through, through eyesight. Um, this woman is, is in what we would call an intimate moment. She's, she's breastfeeding her child. Um, and this soldier who is nearby is looking on her as she does. He's watching her. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a disruption in some way to this intimate moment. We might call it an intrusion um, of, of the, 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 the eyesight here, uh, the gaze. Um, and um, another thing that's happening here is that, note, she is not returning the gaze. She is looking out at us. Um, you know, while, while the child, as, as any breastfeeding child is, is fixated on his mother, the soldier is fixated on the woman. She is looking out at the viewer. Um, and so she's involving the viewer in the conversation. So there's just an interesting interplay, an interesting conversation, we might say, um, having to do with, um, with eye contact, with eyesight, um, with the, the gaze. And there's a lot of tension, a lot of drama um, that's created by that. Um, this will continue in another work by Giorgione, um, His Old Woman. Um, here, this is a work that seems clearly to be influenced by um, what we see in Hellenistic art. Um, if you look at the, the art of the Hellenistic period, so after the classical period in Greek art, um, a lot of the artists were, were really engaging things with a, a really dramatic kind of realism um, that didn't just focus on youth, it didn't just focus on youthful beauty in the way that, um, for example, um, you know, a work like The Spear Bearer or the, um, uh, or um, the, the Critios Boy or something like that did. Instead, you have um, people depicted in old age, people in various states of um, 
you know, to decay in a sense and, and uh, their health declining. And um, this old woman would be a Renaissance example of that. Um, note, she's looking out at the viewer, just like the woman in The Tempest. She's engaging us as viewers in this conversation. Um, and she's holding a sign. The sign says, col tiempo, which, which means with time. So it's almost as though the, what the, conversa the conversation that's happening here, the woman is pointing to herself and saying to us, you, you may pity me, you may feel sorry for me, you may even be repulsed by me, but with time, you will be like me. This is what time does to us all. So there's a, an empathy that's generated there, um, a dramatic kind of tension that's created there. And we, the viewers, are, are brought in to the conversation. Um, one more work by Giorgione, his, his Sleeping Venus. And um, this, is a, this is a fascinating work in a lot of ways. Um, much like we saw in the, in the later classical period of, of Greek art, um, was the turn from, from just depicting male nudes to, to female nudes in sculpture. Um, you know, we've had, uh, we've had more of depiction of, of both the male and female nude um, in Renaissance art. Um, and Giorgione is, is definitely um, engaging with that here. Um, as, to kind of continue with the theme of, of the gaze of eye contact, part of what's different here is that we as viewers are looking upon this woman in an unguarded moment. Um, she's sleeping. She is, um, you know, vulnerable in some ways to the elements around her, but also she's vulnerable to us uh, watching her as an audience. Um, she's passive here. She's not actively engaging us in the way that some of these other um, subjects we've, we've looked at have been. Um, one of the things that's often said about this painting is that Giorgione almost paints her as part of the landscape. And he achieves that both through, through realism, through you know, depicting the human form realistically um, and, and, and centering it, situating it here within this landscape, but also um, through realism and landscape, what we saw with Leonardo and his, uh, his Mona Lisa and the way that he has uh, the Mona Lisa, the, the subject of the portrait merge with, um, merge with the landscape behind her. Um, again, depth created with atmospheric perspective, some, some of those Renaissance qualities, um, and, uh, and a classical theme, Venus, the goddess of love, this name being ascribed to um, uh, a woman um, here at the center of the painting. Um, moving on to the younger artist Titian, um, here's a, a work, Assumption of the Virgin. This is a work that um, would be very much uh, at home in some of the works of the Catholic Reformation. We're going to talk more in depth about those, but here as a, as a Renaissance work, we, we see some, some features of Renaissance art, uh, realism, drama, tension, vivid colors, um, it's, it's depicting a, a, a teaching in the church, the assumption of, of Mary, the virgin into heaven, um, and uh, surrounded, of course, by the angels, looked upon by the saints. Um, this idea that we, we see in the Renaissance, uh, and particularly in the Catholic Reformation, um, that the church is, is, is a, a community and that um, Mary plays a prominent role in that community. Um, so we see all of these elements here in Titian's Assumption of the Virgin. Um, here's his Venus of Urbino, uh, a companion piece in some ways to Giorgione's um, Sleeping Venus, um, with some differences. Of course, the, the main difference um, is that this Venus is not sleeping. Um, so unlike the first one, where um, we were looking at a, a passive subject, here this, this Venus is, is looking at us, right? Just like the woman in the Tempest or the, the old woman of Giorgione's work. Um, here, Titian's Ven Venus of Urbino, um, which is uh, a, a, a painting of a noble woman, um, a real a real person that um, that he would have been commissioned to paint, um, is looking out at us, actively engaging us as viewers in the action of this painting or in the the scene. Um, there are also other figures in the background: a young woman, maybe maybe the the subject's daughter, um, and, and probably a, a, a ser or a, who is kneeling down, and then the, another young woman, a servant, most likely. Um, you have the sleeping dog, which is a um, often a sign of, of marital fidelity. So um, even though this is a, you know, a, a picture depicting a, a nude woman, we're, we're, we're to um, in some ways connect this with an image of marriage, marital love as well. Um, depth through linear perspective, the use of architecture, the use of the wall here, um, the columns in the background um, to, to divide up the painting. These are all Renaissance qualities 
um, and certainly atmospheric perspective in the background. Um, shading, chiaroscuro, um, that shading of light and dark. We see all of these things here in this work. Um, and one more piece by Titian. This is the, the Rape of Europa, um, a really um, exemplary Renaissance work in a lot of ways. Um, for one is simply the, the classical theme, um, taking a theme from mythology rather than a, um, a, a theme from Christianity. Um, it, it depicts uh, a, a famous scene in uh, classical art um, and in classical mythology where Europa was abducted by, by Zeus uh, in the form of a bull. Um, and uh, she's being carried away. Um, so the drama of that scene is captured in a number of ways, right? It's captured through, through movement. The, uh, the, the garment that she's waving here, that's waving in the wind, helps us to, to see the movement here. Um, as our line of vision is drawn from left to right, we see the, the bull carrying her away, um, churning the waves as he does, um, which of course creates even more drama. Um, you have the, the bystanders, the onlookers on the shore that are, that are um, sort of dramatically involved here. Um, the the uh, cherubic figures, the um, Cupid-like figures here, um, also kind of in a, in a tumult. Um, and Cupid himself um, riding, a, riding a fish. Um, Note here where the eye contact is coming from. You have the fish that is, that is kind of making eye contact with us and the bull that is making eye contact with us. But the, the other figures are all looking upon one, one another um, and, and the gaze is, is kind of uh, directed there. Um, really, really important uh, work of, of atmospheric perspective here or display of atmos atmospheric perspective here. The, the mountains in the background um, are just shadowy forms um, here in, in Titian's rendering, um, the clouds um, as well. So depth is created that way. So because of the, the classical theme of mythology, because of the drama here, um, because of the, the use of atmospheric perspective, all of these things um, serve to make this piece a really exemplary work of Renaissance art uh, coming out of the Venetian Renaissance. So um, that's just a few, uh, a few elements of Venetian Renaissance art that I wanted to make sure we, we looked at. Um, if you have questions, please let me know. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Um, I hope you all have a, a good weekend and um, good luck on, on your exam.